guys and welcome back to another wood brew video. This week we are finally building a miter saw station for our shop. There's lots of bits and pieces that go into making this miter saw station so if you want any details about those check the link in the description below to where we have a blog post that covers everything in depth. Let's get started. The frame of this miter stand is made from Rockler's shop stands. Now these stands are customizable by offering stretcher links from 18 inches to 60 inches long and two leg links of 28 inches and 32 inches. All three of the stands we used are 24 inches by 36 inches, but the middle stand uses the shorter 28 inch legs. These stands come with leveling feet, but we opted to add casters to keep everything in the shop mobile. The last step of assembly is we added a T-Track table to the top, which will be very useful later. In order to close these stands in, we used quarter inch plywood for the back and half inch plywood for the sides. Using the existing holes, we screwed the plywood in place. These sides will give us a place to mount the drawer slides, keep dust out, and give us mounting options for storage in the future. Now onto the drawer slides. We have to build up the thickness of the sides so that the drawer slides do not run into the legs. First we cut two one and a half inch wide strips of three quarter inch plywood and glued them together. Next we mark the center of each drawer onto the blocks. Mark the center of each strip on each of the drawer marks that we made earlier and pre-drill a hole in the center for mounting the slides. This will ensure the slides are mounted square and in line with each other. Open the drawer slides and mount them in place using the supplied screws. Make sure you use the same holes on each side and be sure to line up those holes with the pre-drilled holes we'd made earlier. After installed, I made sure everything is square and added several more screws. Speaking of drawer slides, these are super heavy duty Accuride drawer slides that I'll link in the description below. Once you have made both side assemblies, it's time to mount them inside the stand. I held the assembly in place while Molly used a 3 quarter inch spacer on the front. This spacer will allow the drawer front to sit flush with the front of the stand later. I pre-drilled holes through the inside of the stand and Molly used screws from the outside to secure the assembly in place. Once both sides were installed, it was time to make the drawers. We will have two shallow 6 inch drawers and one deep 12 inch drawer. The 6 inch drawers have a quarter inch plywood bottom and the 12 inch have a half inch plywood bottom. This is a super simple method of making drawers. First we used glue and brad nails to tack the sides together. Then squared it up using the bottom as a reference added glue and brad nailed it down. To ensure the drawers are super strong, we came back and added screws to the sides and bottom of each drawer. Now it's time to install the drawers. First mark a line down the center of the drawer. Remove the slide and place it on the line you just drawn. The front of the slide should line up with the front of the drawer and centered on the line. After pre-drilling holes, I used the supplied screws to attach the slide. When you flip the drawer over, use some scraps to keep the slide that you just installed from being banged up. Lastly, slide the whole drawer back into the slides. With these slides, we had to pull the ball bearings forward before sliding the drawers in place. Moving on to drawer fronts. Cut a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to the correct width and a little longer than it needs to be. This is going to allow us to have continuous grain pattern on the front of the cabinets. Now cut each drawer front in order as they go on the cabinet. We had two 6 inch tall drawer fronts and one 12 inch tall front. Be sure to cut these a little undersized so they have a gap in between each drawer. The easiest way to attach drawer fronts is to use the holes for the drawer pulls to temporarily hold them in place. We used a jig from Rockler to drill 4 inch on center drawer pull holes. This jig makes keeping the holes consistent so much easier. Use spacers to help align the drawer front and then pre-drill holes through the drawer pulls and into the drawer box. Once you screw the drawer front in place, you can open the drawer and attach the drawer front from inside before removing the screws that are in the drawer pull holes. 
Repeat this on all the drawers, making sure you keep the grain direction the same. Moving on to the center stand. We will repeat the same process of adding sides, but this time we will use quarter inch plywood on all the sides and we're going to add a quarter inch bottom. The center cabinet will house a shop vac as a dedicated dust collection for the miter saw. We have a full dust collection video coming soon, so be on the lookout for that. We are adding a door to the front of this cabinet, but we need a place to mount the hinges. For this, we added a 3 quarter inch plywood strip to the inside of the leg. After adding that board, we could cut our door out and add the hinges. We are going to use our X-Carve machine to carve out maple drawer pulls. We have a link to the project page below where you can get the file to carve your own. These are super easy to make and only took about 5 minutes to carve. We have a bunch of projects using this machine linked in a playlist below if you want to see more. After they came off the machine we decided to round over the edges using the router table. After a bit of hand sanding, we applied a wax finish to the handles. We used the same rocker jig to mark hole locations on the handles and pre-drilled the holes. Lastly, we attached all the handles to the drawers using wood screws. Before sliding the stands in place, we drilled four holes in the back of the stand to allow us to route dust collection and power. We have a nifty way of setting up dust collection for this, and we will cover that in our upcoming dust collection video. We slid the stands in place and found the miter saw needed to be lifted about a half inch to be flush with the side tables. We slid a piece of half inch plywood under the saw and secured it with screws. We wanted to be able to easily remove the saw so we decided to use T-Track stops in the front and auto lock T-Track clamps in the back to easily be able to secure and release the saw. Because we use T-Track tables, the options are endless for accessorizing this stand. One quick and easy way to make repeatable cuts is by using a T-Track stop, but there are literally so many ways to upgrade this stand. You could make adjustable fences with measuring tapes, flip stops, and so much more. We haven't decided what all we want to do with this, so leave a comment below with your ideas and maybe we'll implement them in a future video. That's going to do it for this week's video, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next week.